no voice talking. And Brenda's also Bachi. So, with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Becky so that we can give you the schedule of events. Yeah. Yes, hi. Hi, 
want to thank Dan Runner and Aunt Floyd for doing this pill of recycling because when I walk into Aunt Floyd's apartment, the whole pump is filled with the washable containers that she has done and she spends hours on this. So in the name of recycling and helping another continent or wherever they go, Jan, I don't know. They really spend a lot of time on this, so kudos to both of you. In a more serious vein, I walk around the grounds a lot, and I browse a lot of dog food, and I think we should be uh, respectful of everybody else. So. Uh, I'm not saying anybody that Lucy is doing that, but if you have visitors that we can talk, please remind them that uh, it's appropriate. Uh, it's uh, not catch and release, okay? Like <laughs> so I think it would be wise if everybody just mentioned anybody that visits with the dog. It's appropriate to pick up that. Thank you. Very good announcement. Anybody else? Catch and release dog food. Why are you catching it in the first place? <laughs> okay, I just have, I didn't, oh first, I just want to announce that we've been, we started the neighborhood luncheons and we've done three of them so far and they've been wonderful. I mean, from my perspective, it was nice to hear stories that I may have heard before by some, some brand new folks that it gives Allison and I a chance to get to know you, plus your neighbors who already know you, but they get to hear your stories. It was really nice. It also gave us a chance to talk about the expansion and field any questions. So um, I think we have one scheduled for next week, and then we're going to start scheduling more of them. So uh, again, it's been successful so far. And then my other announcement is I had the MVP for the month of February, and that is Christine Simpson. Woo! So this nomination form came from one of our directors, Mary Lou Latina Land. And I think Christine has shown true commitment to Fox Run since she first started here in November of 2021. She shows true compassion for each resident and for incoming clients and current community members moving to the health center. They trust her and they believe in her. She takes her role of filling up our health center very seriously and has worked really hard to increase those numbers over and over again. It's a lot of time management, giving tours, updating forms, getting all the necessary paperwork, follow up with email and phone calls with families and, and future residents, um, and the future resident, all while her phone is ringing and the incoming person may be getting discharged today or tomorrow. So if you know anything about our health center, uh, the discharge, the hospitals call the shots and they tell you, we're discharging tomorrow, which is very stressful on the entire nursing staff. Uh, but it's, it's uh, equally stressful on Christine, and she does such a great job of managing all of it. In a stressful time, she manages to calm fears of family and friends and the residents alike. She, I think she handles her role with grace and di dignity, just like our mission statement. She never loses sight of our ultimate goal, which is our residents, their care, and quality of life. Um, I, if you see Christine in action and you see her working with family members or meeting someone for the first time, you could tell that somebody just has it. You know, they have that 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 built-in compassion. That's not something we can train or teach. It's just what you have as a person. And Christine has that warmth to her. Um, that's apparent in the first second you meet her. So, Christine, thank you for everything you. you do. We're blessed to have Christine, so thank you, Christine. And we stole her from Canterbury Reds. <laughs> All right, so uh, next step. Oh, introduce our speaker. Well, we're on a bit of a delay. Okay. Because we're having technical issues, so Dolly went to go print out the presentation. So we're just waiting for Dolly. There she is. Oh, she's walking that way. Yeah. Is that a good sign? <laughs> so
So while I was standing there spinning this volleyball, because as a child, I can't, once I have this, I just can't stop moving, and, and the dog was staring at it the entire time, just Aww. wanting to play. And this is my son's volleyball, his official NCAA that he plays with in college, and I stole it from him. <laughs> All right, Dolly, ready? Yeah. Okay, I, Woo, Dolly. it is my pleasure to introduce, for the second time today, Christine Simpson and Dolly Miskell. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Hello. How are we doing? Good. Good. So we originally had a very nice PowerPoint, but we were a little delayed. We, May have forgot to tell Melissa, which is my fault. <laughs> so we're going to go old school and read it off the paper for you. Um, so we do have extra copies that I'm currently printing out, and I can always bring them back over if anybody wants a copy. But I'm going to let Christine take it over um, and talk a little bit about assisted living and memory care, and I'm here for back. Yes. Thank you, Dolly. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. So we are going to, or I am going to, actually read through this presentation. If everyone can hold their questions to the end of the presentation, because I think the education that we're going to be providing to you is going to be in the presentation. Okay? So I'm going to talk about assisted living and memory care here at Fox Run at Orchard Park and what that means to you independent living folks. So first, I'm going to go through a typical day in assisted living or memory care. So for meal times, so breakfast, 8.30 to 9.30, lunch, 12.30 to 1.30, and dinner, 5.30 to 6.30. Showers are completed two times a week, laundry two times a week, and that includes your linen change as well, one times a week, and as needed. So. We're very flexible in assisted living. Dolly is the one that actually sets the schedules for showers, laundry, housekeeping. And she gets that information through my assessment that I do with our folks that are being admitted to assisted living. So it's very important that we're person-centered care. So getting your preferences and how you like your routines to be is very important to us at Box Run. So from your preferences, then Dolly is very creative at times uh, to make sure that your preferences are being met to your likings. So not every assisted living resident will need assistance with showers. Residents can be independent with showering. Memory care residents will always at least require supervision due to their memory impairments in location of the shower room. So for those of you that don't know what assisted living or memory care suites look like, our assisted living suites have showers right in the bathroom, in the rooms, walk-in showers. Our memory care suites do not. And that's for safety purposes, because those residents that come to memory care have a level of cognitive impairments, we don't want them to try to do showering on their own for safety purposes. So in both assisted living and memory care, medications are passed usually before breakfast, during lunch, and around dinner time. If you have a medication that is as needed, a Tylenol or a pain medication, that's where you will alert the nurse by using your PERS button or going to the nursing station to request that medication. We do have a large array of activities in assisted living, just like here uh, over at Independent Living. So activities are scheduled between 10 and 10.30 and then 2 and 2.30. Activity staff goes around throughout the day with an activities card as well as to provide independent activities that they can do in the room. The activities table is placed at the table near the fish tank as well. Memory care staff do a deep cleaning of rooms on a weekly basis. Assisted living has housekeeping 
cleaning for their rooms one time a week. Staff make beds every morning. If resident prefers to do that, they're more than welcome to do that as well. We want to promote as much independence as possible. Our nurses monitor our residents as needed on a 24-hour report. A medical chart, answer family calls, contact doctors, pharmacies, complete paperwork. So in assisted living, much different than independent living, we are a medical model. So we have a licensed practical nurse and personal care assistants 24 hours a day, seven days a week. What we monitor for assistance. In assisted living and memory care, we monitor activities of daily living and how much assistance is required with each one. So we monitor the following, how much the person needs assistance with or no assistance with, bathing, dressing, grooming, toileting, transferring, ambulating, or walking, if they're able to feed themselves, and are they continent or do they need assistance with that? So from all those areas, that's where Dolly and the nursing team come up with called an ISP, Individualized Service Plan. So that is done initially and then it's updated throughout the year and then fully updated on an annual basis. And Dolly has wonderful meetings with those folks that live in assisted living and or their family or designated representatives to review exactly what their care needs include. And she's always on standby for phone calls, um, constant contact with our folks in assisted living and memory care. So often you'll see her buzzing around, rarely is she ever in her office. <laughs> Bear with me. So what nurses can and cannot provide in assisted living and memory care, and this is per the Department of Health regulations. This is not Fox Run policies. So it's very important that we follow those regulations because they do survey us to make sure that all of our residents are getting the care that they require, but also that we're uh, following their recommendations and regulations. So all our residents must be able to self-manage any durable medical equipment independently. So durable medical equipment includes walkers, canes, um, electric wheelchairs, scooters, shower chair, Oxygen, that's a big one. <laughs> uh, nurses in assisted living and memory care are unable to assess residents per the Department of Health regulations. So what that means is, much different than our skilled nursing where we have registered nurses on site that can complete assessments, our assisted living and memory care do not have that. And that is the way we're licensed. So even if we hired an RN in our assisted living and memory care, they still could not do assessments per the Department of Health regulations. So they're unable to check your oxygen levels, do any extensive wound care. If they do require, if they have skin issues, um, nothing more than what they can do is put a Band-Aid on it, unfortunately. But we have home care agencies. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with licensed home care agencies, but we are able to utilize them with a doctor's order and a nurse or a physical therapy or occupational therapy can come in and treat our residents in assisted living or memory care. So since nursing is unable to assess, that means that the residents must be sent out to the hospital when an acute issue arises if we cannot manage it. Even if the resident has the most form that states otherwise. So the most store most form, excuse me, is medical orders, life sustaining treatments. 
So it's basically a continuation of your healthcare proxy, and it gives very specifics on what you want or don't want. And I believe in our assisted living and memory care, more than 80%, maybe 90% of our folks have those forms in place. They come with them or Dolly initiates them with a resident and or their designated representative. We do have forms on site. If anybody's interested in reviewing them, um, you can bring them to your doctor's office or your doctor's office has them as well. It's just a safeguard to make sure that whoever is treating you knows exactly what your medical wishes are. Nursing staff, unfortunately, is unable to provide injections, too. So if you have a B12 injection or a Procrit injection, again, that's where um, a family member could give it or a home care agency could give it if you already have home care services. You can't sign up for home care services and just for an injection. That won't qualify, unfortunately. Thank you. <laughs> So for assisted living, there is specific paperwork that is required uh, for an admission to assisted living. I work with you all or your loved ones to get that paperwork completed before we set the admission date for assisted living. I wish we didn't have this much paperwork, but unfortunately it's not in our control. So your doctor does need to see you and complete a medical evaluation, which we do have. Um, Lori in Wellness has them, Dolly, myself, Dana. And once the medical evaluation is reviewed and completed and signed, then it comes back to myself and then we can actually schedule the admission date. There's so many moving parts. I can tell you that from start to finish, it takes approximately two weeks to transition from an independent living situation over to the health center and assisted living or memory care. We have done it much, much quicker, depending on what the need is. If it's an emergency situation, we've had people come in within two to three days. So we will make it happen to ensure all of your safety and that your needs are being met. So prior to coming to assisted living, when you're working with myself to coordinate the transition, uh, typically what happens is Lori from medical or from the wellness office or Allison in resident services will reach out to myself or Dolly indicating that there could be a need for this person to transition. So we meet on a weekly basis to keep track of all of you. Believe it or not, Allison and her crew has a very big task and they do a great job. So it's very important that when we know that somebody needs extra help, first Allison and her team will try to get the help in the apartment and then there's always a discussion possibly if you no longer can have that help in the apartment or your safety is a concern uh, then we transition over to the health center. So once that's determined, there's many, many, many conversations with you, the resident, or the family member, or the designated representative. So once the conversation's had, then I often will reach out and see if you'd like a tour and learn more about assisted living memory care. I'm not talking too much about skilled nursing right now because that's a whole nother ball of wax. <laughs> it's a little, um, I don't want to say more complicated, but there's more people involved with that transition. And we're going to do another education for just skilled nursing. And you can meet the skilled nursing team if you haven't already. Uh, so once we do the tour, uh, you're committed to assisted living, and then we start the paperwork. Um, I do the assessments for your preferences. 
Um, Dolly may have some questions that I get completed. Dolly, Dana will do the final screening for you to determine if, in fact, you are appropriate for assisted living. Again, it goes back to the Department of Health regulations. So you have to be independent with your walking, your toileting, your transfers. We help with bathing, light hands on dressing, medication management. How I think of assisted living and memory care, it's just a smaller community at Box Run. Independent living is much larger. So when you come over to assisted living and or memory care, you still get all the amenities that you're receiving in independent living, just at a smaller scale, so it's more intimate. And what's really, really awesome at Box Run is no matter where you live, you still can use the amenities in independent living. You still use the bistro, the oak room, the art gallery, the cultural arts programs. Uh, you can still use the fitness center, the pool, as long as you're appropriate to do so. So, in February, on your calendars, we are having an open house for just the residents at Fox Run. And that is gonna be February 20th, and it's from 2.30 to 4.30. So you can meet the staff, see some of the residents, maybe you haven't seen in a while. And we're also gonna do an ice cream social. So you come for a tour, you meet the staff, and then we'll feed you. <laughs> Questions? Yes. Are there better times to go visit when you might catch people, or I sort of hate to go over sometimes, and then I don't know what to talk about. So her question is visiting hours. Is there a better time or not time to visit somebody in assisted living or memory care? Actually, we don't have visiting hours, but what I can tell you is during the meal time is not a good time because unfortunately, and it's been like this forever, we just don't have the room that allows guests to dine um, in assisted living or memory care. You can always come over and take them out for lunch or go to the bistro or the oak room, but really that's the only time. Anyone else? What are some of the criteria for uh, having people move over? Some of the criteria to have people look at the health center would be if you're having some memory difficulties and you're not managing your medications that well, that's one of the biggest because our nurses are able to take all of that over for you. Um, if you're having... Into assisted. Yes into assisted and or memory care. The nurses do all the medication management, including order from the pharmacy, everything gets delivered. They keep track of it all. Or if you need help with light hands on bathing or dressing, you know, those are the things that we do over in assisted living. Anyone else? Yes. Christine, do you do uh, regular blood pressure checks or that type of just regular maintenance or do you have to go see a doctor for that? No, we do that right on site. That is an excellent question. So we actually prefer to use Anthony Brown or Buffalo Pharmacy. And the reason why is because they package them specifically to make it, I don't want to say easy, but it just makes it work well. So you don't need Wegmans, Rite Aid, CVS. So in my assessment, I will always provide that information and see which pharmacy you choose. 
and then we would get the account set up for you. Uh, you would provide payment option, and then uh, we would use your current medications first until they ran out, and then we would utilize the new pharmacy. I have two questions. Uh, can I bring my car and still continue to drive? And do you take people out uh, on the bus for outings outside the campus? So yes, you can bring your car as long as your doctor says you can still drive. So currently we do have uh, somebody living in assisted living that does have his car and he goes out every morning at the same time. Uh, he makes his rounds, he goes to the fire department, he'll go to his daughters, uh, and then he comes back a couple hours later. So yes, having a car is not an issue. It's parked right in the health center parking lot. And again, it's as long as your doctor says you're safe to drive. Activities. <laughs> All right, so for activities, um, we do go on outings. They just did an outing to Fuji Grill, um, and they also did, they're also planning an outing to Red Lobster coming up this month. So we do like our food outings in the health center. Um, we might not do as many as we do over here, but we have a lot of other activities that they provide throughout the day that we do take advantage of quite a bit. Um, and then the nice thing too about living in assisted living is that you can always partake in the in-house activities over in independent living as well. So if there's a Paul Ferringer at night or anything like that that you want to come and see, you're more than welcome to come over from assisted and partake in that. I don't know how, who can answer this, but is there a doctor on site part-time and what's that role? So we do have a doctor service you could utilize over there. It is mobile primary care, which I believe is also offered over here now. So if you do decide to transition, even an independent to mobile primary care, they are overseeing the entirety of Fox Run. So in assisted living, you do have the option to use them, but you can keep your own doctor as well. And if you do choose to do mobile primary care, it would just replace your current primary doctor. But you would keep all your specialists, all your, you know, dermatologists, cardiologists, things like that. Uh, two things. First, uh, my wife and I are using mobile primary care to come right to your apartment, and we found it very, very uh, easy to do, and the, uh, it's been it's worked for us. Second thing I just wanted to say is, when you move to assisted living, you're downsizing. So there's going to be furniture you need to get rid of. A lot, in, in many cases, your family will take a lot of it. But in many cases, there's stuff left over that you can't get rid of. And if you want to get in touch with me, I've been in contact with four or five uh, of the charities in the area, and they're always looking for things, and I can get rid of almost anything and it will be utilized rather than going in one acre junk or someplace else. It just, it's just wonderful to see things used and not thrown away. Any others? I can say it. Um, I missed a little bit because I had to go out with a cough, but uh, are there things that we are required? I've heard that we have to bring our own toilet paper and our own uh, towels washcloths, is that correct? And what else do we need? And the other question I have is when uh, our laundry is done, does our individual laundry get put into a machine by itself and washed? Or is it put in with everybody else's? And, um, how do they handle the laundry? Those are really good questions, Mrs. Floyd. So, the questions were about laundry. So for your laundry, does it come back? Does it go into a bigger machine with everyone else's laundry? And, or is it being done all together? So what I do is I'll schedule you a day, and if you need assistance with showers, it usually goes with your shower, laundry, and your linen. Your linen is changed one time a week. Your showers is usually two times a week, but we can add more or less depending. And your laundry is twice a week. So I try and coincide it all together. So all your towels and everything are getting done at the same time. 
the aids will take it and wash it in its own individual washer. We generally don't combine in assisted living. And then it goes into its own dryer. They fold it and bring it back to you. They also have the option of helping you bring or put it away if you need help or they can, some residents prefer to do that themselves as well. So, and then the other question was about bringing your own toiletries. So yes, in assisted living, we do have to bring our own toilet paper, towels, things like that. Um, toothpaste, toothbrushes, anything you would use, makeup, deodorant, that's all provided by residents and their families. And that's really so that way it can be, you can be comfortable with your own items as well because everything else, if we got it in bulk, would all be very generic. So, and we like people to have their own personal items to make it homey and make you feel comfortable in the environment. Could you also clear up something else I've heard? Sure. Two different versions. One that when you are in the dining room, that you are assigned to a table and you sit with the same people all the while. And then I've heard, no, that isn't so. And I'd like to know which is which. That's a really good question, too. So this is generally what I say, is my very professional Fox Run generic answer, is that the question was, is there assigned seating in the dining room, yes or no, and do we have to sit with the same people? No, there is not assigned seating. It has been discussed in the past, um, because some people like to sit in the same seat every day, and some people like to meander around and change their seat up. But everyone in resident council on our assisted living voted no, they didn't want assigned seating. But people are creatures of habit. So they do like to sit in the same seat. You will hear some residents say, no, that's my seat. And then we have this, this nice discussion that there is no assigned seating. <laughs> so is, technically there isn't, but people do like to sit in the same seat. Any other questions for these ladies? Well, um, thank you so much, um, Dolly and Christine, for your time. I know um, Lori and myself work very closely with um, Dolly and Christine. We're always we're always in contact. You know, I would say more than a weekly basis. Um, especially you know if any of you ever go out to the hospital or things like that. So we're very lucky. So if you ever have questions for them, I urge you to go to that open house. You know, even if. You're not interested right now in the health center. Um, it's nice to get a tour. I know a lot of you I hear you know haven't been over there, um, so please check it out. Enjoy the ice cream. Um, and I did just want to wish Lizzie a happy birthday. So we see Lizzie today. Well, I wish you all um, a nice weekend and happy Friday. Thank you.